Hello, today we're going to talk about steps to take when selling your home. I'd like to start by having you meet our team. I also want to share with you that we're interviewing each other. You're interviewing me, I'm interviewing you. And only if we can work together, we'll be able to guide you through this extensive process to help you sell your home in the quickest time possible and at the highest price. I want you to relax. I want you to know what we're gonna do for you, when we're gonna do it, and why we're gonna do it. We're not gonna simply promise to be marketing geniuses and brag about ourselves. Instead, I'm gonna show you just how we're gonna be resourceful in helping you through one of the most important processes of your life. Our cornerstone, one of the things that we take pride in, the highest level of service is the cornerstone of our unprecedented success. And this is our continued promise to you. Professionalism, knowledge, integrity, commitment are all aspects of offering the absolute best as real estate professionals. As your helpful guide throughout every step of every real estate transaction, I personally take pride in my company and we market on focusing to your personal attention and to your complete satisfaction. My team is super experienced. And we all work together to ensure that you always receive the excellent service that you expect and that you deserve. At the M&M Team Realty, we view numbers such as sales results as nothing more than a reflection of our commitment and our service to our clients. Our success is not just the number of deals, but it's in the way that we deal with our clients. You can expect that every transaction with us is going to be a positive. It's going to be a great experience. And your success is my success. Let's start by, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. What I really have a lot of pride in is I work with people who are going through life-changing events such as marriage, divorce, a new baby, whether it be probate, whether it be a trust sale, whether it be someone who's just looking to upgrade or downgrade. In the world that we live in, especially in the past year, we're looking with more and more families are coming together. They're downsizing, and they're joining forces. That's why I come in and I will help and guide you through that experience. I have been selling residential real estate for over 20 years. I have a lot of experience and I'm also a registered nurse. I retired in 2017 so that I can dedicate full time to my company and to my team. So with my knowledge as a nurse manager, and managing many people, many sources, a lot of things, multitasking at the same time. I bring all of that experience into every transaction that I work with, every client, one step at a time. I'd like for you to meet my husband, Leroy. He is the co-founder and his specialty, he has been in real estate well over 13 years, probably about 15, 16 years now. He is dedicated to client care, honesty, ethics. He's a 20-year veteran. He served 20 years in the United States Marine Corps. And I just believe that he knows everything. He can fix everything and he can do everything. So he's going to be right here, step-by-step step, answering your questions also. Next, I'd like for you to meet my daughter, Glennis. Glennis has been a realtor for well over nine years. I think we're probably going into her 11th or 12th year now. And prior to real estate, she worked as a credit manager. She's a semi-professional track and field runner. Now she has her own brand in fitness. She's working at one of our local community gyms. 
She's an assistant track and field coach, and she's our marketing director. So she's going to bring all of her energy and all the enthusiasm and everything that is needed to help guide your transaction into a smooth and powerful ending and solution. There are seven steps to selling your home, and we're going to talk about them. They may seem like simple steps, but each step is complicated and builds upon the next one. The first thing is the selling consultation, and that's what we are doing. Either you're watching this video or we're having this video on Zoom or we were having this video and having this conversation face to face. This is just one of the multiple things that we do so that I can answer all of your questions. The next thing that we do is we develop a pricing strategy and how we price the home compared to similar properties is really critical in the successful sale, especially in today's market. We develop a marketing strategy and our marketing strategy is designed to position your home to appeal to the most likely buyers. We're going to implement that customized marketing plan because no two homes are exactly alike. So we, we formulate a plan that's unique to your home. We want you to understand your role. Selling a home is a partnership between us as your agent and between you as the homeowner. We are going to negotiate the purchase contract. It's very critical that we are going to represent you and your best interest throughout this stressful process of negotiations. And we're going to manage the entire transaction throughout closing. We take care of everything from contract to close to ensure a clean and error-free transaction. We do more than just drop a sign in the yard and post it in the MLS and hope that someone will see it, buy it, and everything is great. We are a hands-on company. So let's talk about this selling consultation. When you work with us, I take the time to promote the sale of your property. I will become your seller's agent. I'm working on your behalf and I'm looking out for your best interest. I do the marketing, I do the evaluation, I do the negotiation, the offers from buyers with the buyer's agents and I guide you throughout this entire transaction property. Especially in today's market, we're in a seller's market, which could change. We don't know when, but it could change and it could become a buyer's market. So we just wanna, whichever market we're in, we wanna make sure that we're guiding you in the best possible way. I want you to understand agency. There is the seller's agent, which means I work for you as the seller. There is the buyer's agent who works on behalf of the buyer. Now, in some case, an agent may represent both the buyer and the seller. For example, I may have a buyer who's interested in your property. And in that case, I would let both of you guys know, and there is a full disclosure. But it is possible because I am the broker and I have nine other agents on my team. One of those agents could have a buyer. And because I am a broker, even though there's someone else representing that buyer and I'm representing you as the seller because I'm the broker, it's still considered a dual agent. So I want to make sure that if that happens, we let you know. One of the things that matters to you also matters to us. And what I like to talk about is why have you decided to sell your home? I want you to think about that. Is there anyone else that's going to be involved? All of the decision makers should come to the table. And it doesn't necessarily have to be someone who's on title with you. This could just be someone that you trust, your best friend, your spouse, your children, you know, your parents, whoever it is. We want to make sure that you feel comfortable in making the best decisions. So bring whoever you want to be involved with this transaction. It's totally all good. Another thing I'd like to find out is, have you sold a home before? Have you purchased a home before? Let's talk about your experiences. Let's talk about the pros and cons and what's different then and what's different now. 
Are there any issues with the property that I need to know about? That's very important that I understand. So then we know how to price and we know what to do. and We know our plan of attack. Do we have flexible timing? Are we working toward a specific date? Are there leveraged debt on the property? You could be upside down. Maybe not. It could be completely paid off. And when you sell, everything is profit. Let's talk about those things. Whatever the situation is, let's talk about it. Communication, how would you like updates? How would you like to be updated? Do you prefer a phone call? Do you like text message? Do you prefer email? Whatever works for you works for me. And as far as the property, will personal property be included in the sale? For example, the refrigerator, the washer, the dryer. Are you leaving anything behind? Are you relocating to another location? Are we selling this property so that you can purchase another property? Those are all of the things that we want to plan, coordinate, and make sure that we include. Let's talk about markability. What will you miss most about this home? What will your family miss most about it? What will you miss about the location? What are some of your favorite features? What compliments have you received on it? What characteristics make it unique? And what do you believe and who is the most likely buyer? These are all of the things that are important in marketability. One of the things that we make sure that we do is we want to be proactive versus reactive. There are two of the first things that we do when we list your home. We order a preliminary title report. And we have you fill out a seller property questionnaire and a transfer disclosure statement, among with many other disclosures as the seller. Now, these documents are going to answer, confirm some of the questions that tell us and make sure that we're on the right foot and discuss potential issues that could come up. Another thing that we could do is order a seller home inspection. And that way you will know exactly everything that the buyer's home inspection may show up and may be perceived at that time. So keep that in mind that those are things that we could do. Let's talk about price versus equity. With the current marking pricing, is there a possibility that you could be in a short sale position? And what I mean by that, do you owe more on the home than what it's worth? And if it that could happen, Let's talk about it. Does your current mortgage have a prepayment penalty clause? Let's talk about it. Let's look at it. Let's pull out your mortgage statement and let's review. Are you aware of any liens on your property, any mechanics liens? You did some work and somebody stuck a lien because they think you owe them money. Are there any easements or encroachments, anything that anyone can attach themselves to your property? That's called an easement or an encroachment. We want to talk about that and we want to deal with it. If you live in a condominium, it's very possible that you're going to have an HOA. Let's talk about that. Are there dues? Are there fees, transfer fees? Are there any litigations, any assessments? Are there any issues, anything that we need to know about? Any physical issues? any defects, any major repairs, anything that may need to be taken care of prior to the sale that will be disclosed. Let's get it out there. Let's disclose it now so that we know when the buyer's home inspection is done and we say there is an issue with the roof. Yes, we know there's an issue with the roof and we included it on our transfer disclosure statement. The next thing we do is we determine our pricing strategy. Pricing is very important in today's market. It can determine how fast we sell our home or it can determine that our home would just sit on the market. We know that it's not up to us to decide the market value, but we can determine the best strategy for how we set the price. We want to be right in the middle. If we are, in the middle, that will determine our market value. And at the market value of being in the middle, it'll draw 60% of the buyers. If we are 10% over the market value, that's going to draw only 30% of our buyers. If we are 
15% over the market value, that's only going to draw 10%. If we are a little bit under the market value, I mean, we priced it a little bit low on purpose, we will generate 75% of the buyers. And if we go a little lower than that, maybe 15% under, that draws 90% of the buyers and that what could potentially turn into a bidding war, which is what we're seeing right now. We're seeing a lot of that going on in today's market. People are paying multiple, multiple dollars over the listed price. So if we price it just right, that could also happen to us. Accurate pricing, if we price too low, we don't want to leave money on the table. Our goal is to get as much money as we can. If we price it too high, we want people to come see us. We don't want the home to stay on the market with fewer showings. And typically those showings don't generate great offers. We have to determine the right price. And that's where I come in. And that's what I'm going to help you do. The next thing is we're going to talk about what impacts the value of your home your home location, the size, the condition, our local market conditions, and the comps, what's recently sold in the area. Those are things that's going to affect your home. There are other factors that directly impact. This may include the current mortgage interest rate. Right now, today, the interest rates are super low. The national and the regional economic condition, buyer's demand, demand is very high right now. We do not have enough homes for buyers. And all the buyers are looking everywhere that they can to find a home that they can purchase. Availability of competing properties and the price of recently sold properties, all of those things impact the value of the home. Now let's talk about the first weeks of being on the market. Time on the market is not our friend. We do not want our home to stay on the market very long, especially in today's market. When a new home is listed for sale, we market it extensively to other agents, potential buyers. Most of the local working agents and their prospective buyers will see it come out on the market right away. Interest builds over the first two weeks with a peak interest usually about two to three weeks out. Then the longer it sits on the market, the activity of inquiries will start to decrease rapidly. Your home becomes old, it becomes stale, and then other people, other agents, other buyers, they're looking at it, what's wrong with it? There has to be something wrong with the house. And if it's not priced right, you can miss out on showing opportunities or the showings that do occur, it won't produce a positive offer. Your home could eventually sell below the market value. So we don't want to start with, I'm testing the market. Don't do that. Let's price it right, get it sold, and keep it moving so that you may go on to your next journey. Here's the problem with testing the market. Testing the market, the starting price is high. And as you notice, my graph, the buyer's perception of value is steady coming down. Fair market value starting price, which is the next tier. And then we end up with lost time. Look, as we lose time, then we bring the price down. All of that is a problem with testing the market. We lose the buyers. We lose the interest. Early offers are usually the best offers. The longer we're on the market, typically, in my experience, in my past 21 years, the lower the final price will be. We've already talked about why it's important to get our asking price right in order to track the buyers, but it can also come into play where the final accepted offer is concerned. Sometimes sellers, they regret that they didn't take that first offer. They think that a better offer is going to come along. Oh, it's going to happen, surely. But a lot of times that's rare. We do see multiple offers, but early offers are usually better than those that come later. We first look at the list. We're attracting new buyers, those who've been looking but haven't found the perfect home. As time go on and pricing comes down, then we attract the deal makers. And then after deal makers, more time and more pricing production, we end up attracting the bottom feeders. So we don't want to do that. We want to receive our offers, 
review our offers, make an informed decision, and proceed into escrow. Price versus exposure, it's a simple equation. Price, exposure will equal sold. You must start out with the correct and accurate pricing for your home. Then once we've done that, we heavily market the home to potential buyers as well as other realtors in the area. We've established many great avenues and resources for marketing your home. But if we're overpriced, all of our extensive marketing will go to waste. And we will waste money, we waste time, we waste effort. We don't want to do that. The next thing is the impact of listing too high. If our home is priced at fair market value, we're going to see good activity and good amount of buyer's interest. The higher you go above the fair market value, just as I said before, to test the market, the less showings we're going to have. And if we get aggressive and price too far our fair market value and a little below, we're going to generate increased sowings, end up receiving multiple offers with buyers trying to outbid each other. So remember that the longer days on market, the higher the carrying costs. A buyer won't pay more than they have to. They watch the market. They know the value. Everybody's looking everywhere. And if you're priced within the range of your market, buyers going to look at your home. If we're priced too high, they'll skip it and just go to the house down the street. Let's talk about crafting the marketing strategy. Where do buyers find the home? Now, this chart shows where buyers find the home they purchase. 88% of home sales are generated from the marketing efforts of real estate professionals. Real estate agents and internet leads are directly driven from having your home listed on the MLS. Ninety percent of buyers search online. Now, as we just learned in the previous page with the pie chart, 44 percent of buyers actually find the home they purchase on the Internet. But the important thing to know is that over 90 percent of buyers are searching online. It's of utmost importance that we have a strong online marketing plan. And that's where we're going to implement our customized marketing plan. Professional photography is the only way we get one chance to make a first impression. An important step in the marketing process is to have your home photographed professionally. These photos appear in the MLS, all print media, they're posted, and to our top ranked real estate websites. We provide custom professional photography for all of our listings. Online homes, multiple photos get viewed over five times much as homes with only one or two pictures. What we say matters. We take the time to write out a well-written description, promoting your home's best features, what make it unique in our market, and what sets it apart from other competing properties. Separate text is written for both the end consumer, potential buyers, as well as for other agents looking to best fit for their buyer clients. We make sure that we tell the story. We reach every agent in our market. The multiple listings extensive online database. It includes all the listings from participating local brokerage. It's the single most important tool that brokerages and agents use when searching for available properties for their clients. It contains all the properties of listing for sale in our market. And the instant a property is listed in the local MLS, thousands, literally thousands of California agents have immediate online access to all relevant information for their buyers. 75% of the sales originate with the MLS because we, as the listing brokers, we enter that information. This is just some of the real estate websites where your home will be placed. Zillow, Trulia, Homes.com, Yahoo, you heard of all of them. Nationally, these are the top five real estate websites. And if you Google your local homes for sale, these are often the first ones that pop up. We also feature it on my own site, my company site. It's going to show right here as a featured listing. Over 90% of our home buyers search online. So that's why our website is consumer safe and is updated constantly directly from the MLS. 
That is the most important thing. And your home is sent to thousands, literally thousands of other websites. Today, the millennials are the ones who are purchasing homes. They're out there, they're searching, and they are online. They are online and we have to be ready. We have to showcase your home with a virtual tour. We have the injuries leading virtual tour photographers. They offer every one of our listings a custom online virtual tour. As the buyers and their agents use the internet to browse for possible home choices, the added benefit of a virtual tour allows the buyer to better understand the layout, the finishes, the views, etc. We put a yard sign when it's appropriate. Sometimes if we have like a gated community or a condominium or an association that does not allow for yard signs, then we don't place them. We just use other means of marketing to promote that home. And I'll tell you about that shortly. We have coming soon. We have just listed and open house. We do a lot of postcard campaign and prospecting in the local area. We will go to the locations of where we think the buyers are and we prospect a couple of hours each day marketing our property. So we do a lot. We have public and realtor open houses. For a while, we were not able to do open houses, but now open houses are back. We do strategic planning open houses. When we do a broker open house, we're inviting brokers who we think have clients that will love your property. We invite them to come look. When we have public open house, we have already done our prospecting and letting people in the area know that we're going to host an open house. So now we've invited them to come look at the home that we've already told them about. We do customized printing. Just like I said earlier, it takes strong marketing tools such as our full colors, brochures, postcards, mailers, social media ads, all of these things. We present your home in the best possible manner in order to convert those lookers into buyers. We have realtor email. We have access, again, to thousands and thousands and thousands of realtors. So we create ads that are very graphic, they're rich, they're attractive, and we include valuable information regarding selling your property to those agents. And we send that information out to those thousands of agents and the agents love them. We respond very quickly to buyer inquiries. Once we've set the word and told the world that your home is on the market, we are responsive. We're always available by phone, text, email, Whenever there's a genuine interest in the property, we want to make sure that we're able to respond to an interested buyer or another agent inquiring on behalf of their client. Social networking allows us to reach even a wider audience of potential buyers. Promoting your home, following through with the market analysis and agent feedback, periodic reviews of our marketing plan based on current market activity. We discuss pricing and timing within the market. We notify you on other competing properties in your neighborhood. We also inform other agents of any and all changes to your listing. We maintain a stock of property brochures for the buyer, and we make changes to the online marketing as needed. We're constantly involved and working to promote your home. Now let's talk about understanding your role. What are some of the things that you're going to do? Every showing counts. A home that's presented in its best way will typically sell faster at a higher purchase price and with fewer problems involved. We'll walk through your home together. We'll make suggestions. Some of the simple things that can prepare your home to sell to appeal to buyers is we want to remove all personal objects and what we call declutter. And I understand that everything that's in someone's home is very valuable to them, it's very important to them. So we gently and very comforting, we encourage ways of removing some of those personal items. One of the most important things that I recommend removing is photographs and anything that has your name, identifying information. You don't want people 
coming to your house to know who you are and what you look like. And that's just for safety reasons. You know, there are a lot of crazy people in the world. So we want to maintain your privacy and protect you. Do a quick dusting, vacuuming, whatever we need to do to make sure that the home is clean when the buyers arrive. Have all the lights on, the windows open, make sure everything is light and bright. Be aware of any unusual cooking or pet odors. Open the windows, provide air freshener, whatever we need to do. Be sure items like laundry, dishes, kids' toys, pets items, anything is put away. Turn off the TV, appliances, and other distractions that could create anything else for someone to talk about other than your beautiful home. We want you to have your home show like a model home. We don't want it to feel like a used home, if that makes sense. So until we get your home sold, it's always on point. Maintain your home ready to show condition. Try to be flexible with showing if you can. It's best to not be there doing showings. Secure the pets, take them with you. Save the business cards for the agents who tour and let us know of any changes in your property condition. I always make appointments with my sellers. No one will never just show up unannounced. You will always know someone is coming. And like I said, be cautious when talking to buyers. It's best that you're not there. But if you happen to be there, be very careful. Any questions anyone may have, direct them to me as your broker and I will take care of them for you. If you're approached by a buyer that's not accompanied with an agent, contact me immediately. First of all, they will not get in. Don't let them in. And all of your valuables, such as jewelry, portable electronics, any collectibles and anything like that, make sure they are put away. Again, we send some crazy things in this world. Looking for security. One of the things that we do in security and make sure that your home is safe is we install a lockbox. It's a very convenient way for the agents to set up showings while maintaining a high level of security. A realtor key box is a secure way to allow cooperating real estate agents access to your property and your home. And the agent must be a member of the board in order for them to access. And another thing is that when they do access, we get identified, notified immediately that someone has entered with that access. Agent feedback. Another advantage to using the lockbox is that it provides a record of who came. When the realtor shows your home, we receive an email within five minutes. And then we allow them to give feedback. How did it go? How did they like it? Is it priced right? where they're interested, and we have a lot of follow-up questions. Throughout the listing, we continually update you on competing homes in your neighborhood. You need to be aware of other homes that's come on the market, what price they are listed at. Also, once you start to get showing, these other homes will most likely be shown too. If they're selling and yours is not, we need to know why. Figure out why is it priced too high, is it the showing conditions? What were the other homes a better fit? Or is there something that we can do to make our home more appealing? The number six item is we negotiate the contract. That's one of the things that we take pride in. We do our very best. After offers for your home are received, they're going to come on this form called a residential purchase agreement. This is a state approved form that's used to present an offer. The residential purchase agreement is going to be thoroughly read and reviewed by myself. I'm going to send it to you. We're going to talk about it together. And once we receive an offer for your home, we're going to review all of the terms. And then when we've reviewed everything, we will decide and accept the best offer that's going to work for you. At the end of the day, you will have the final saying on the offer that you choose. Just remember, when we accept an offer, it's a legally binding contract. How we evaluate our perfect offer. First of all, offers are not always perfect. Nearly always, each side gives a little bit to meet in the middle. 
It's important when you're evaluating an offer that you stay focused on what you need and try to keep your emotions in check. It can be stressful, but that's why I'm here to help you through it. I provide you with a complete checklist of what to expect, what factors to consider to help guide you through the decision-making process. Managing the transaction throughout the closing after we have accepted an offer, this is when I get to spring into action. I am going to review the seller disclosures. I'm going to review and discuss buyer's due diligence, the time periods, the contingency periods. We're going to talk about buyer's right to cancel. What and when and how can a buyer terminate a real estate contract under certain conditions? We're going to talk about contingencies. We're going to talk about financing. Then we're going to talk about the settlement and the closing. We're going to talk about all of those things. And I'm going to guide you step by step from the beginning to the end. Now, I just want you to take a look at this website. It has a few of my reviews. You may Google me. I am just literally everywhere. But most of my reviews are on Zillow because Zillow is a place where everyone goes. So check out my reviews. Here are the rest of my social media contacts. Like I said, I'm simply everywhere. Please contact me if you have any questions. I know this was a lot for you to absorb in the time that we spent together. Here are my contact information, and I look forward to working with you. Let's make it a great and awesome transaction.